Okay, question three. We've got to uh, find dy by dx. So to start with, we're just going to do this first bit. Find dy by dx in terms of x and y. Um, there are seven marks here, and the first three are for finding dy by dx. So we've got x, y squared is x squared plus 1. The left-hand side here is a product, isn't it? It's x times y squared. So we use the product rule. That's the first times the derivative of the second. If you differentiate y squared with respect to x, you get the derivative of y squared with respect to y times by dy by dx. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. So that's y squared times 1. That's just y squared there. Differentiate the right-hand side and we get 2x. And of course the 1 will go to 0. What we now need to do is to rearrange this to find out what dy by dx is equal to. I think we've got 2xy dy by dx is 2x minus y squared. So 2xy, sorry, dy by dx is uh, that divided by 2xy. Uh, there, are, there are things that you could do with that to try and tidy up, but leave it like that. We just need to find dy by dx in terms of x and y, and there it is. So that's three marks. Hence, find the coordinates of the stationary points in the curve. We've talked about this before, but but if you when they write that, they don't write find the values for which dy by dx is zero. So actually, for you showing that you know that that's what that means, you're going to get a little bit of credit. Actually, show that you are trying to calculate the values of, of x and y, the values of dy by dx, to satisfy that equation. Now, all that matters here is the top line. So we get that. At, at this point, we now need to do something with that. And this is where people start getting stuck with this. Um, what we're saying here is that y squared is equal to 2x. And we've got to find the values on the original curve for which y squared equals 2x. Well, there are a few ways that you can go about doing this, but I think it's easiest, because y squared appears in the original equation, to use this. <coughs> if y squared is 2x, go back to our original equation. That's the condition, isn't it? That's the condition that we have a statement <coughs> point if ever y squared is 2x. So sub that back into what we started with, which was x times y squared. x times y squared equals x squared plus 1. And this is the simplest way of doing this. We've got 2x squared is x squared plus 1. So we've got x squared equals 1. In which case, x is plus or minus 1 if we square root both sides. We need to state the plus or minus at this point. Let's consider what happens for these values. If x equals minus 1, that implies that y squared is equal to minus 2. y squared isn't going to be equal to minus 2, is it? That, there are no real roots to that. So the solution that said that x was equal to minus 1 doesn't lead to any answers. Do you write no real solutions are rejected? Either. It doesn't matter. you just got to not do anything with it. If x equals plus 1, then we're saying that y squared is equal to 2. And this is where loads of people miss the final step with this. That means y equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Every time we square root, we have to remember to do plus or minus. So we actually ended up with two solutions. One of them was 1 root 2, and the other one was 1 minus root 2. Those were the two stationary points. That's our final answer. Does that make sense? Lots of people miss like, this second solution at this point. All right. Thanks, James.